Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I've been trying to flip this aspect ratio, but it's not working. So usually it's horizontal, right now it's vertical. I'm trying, I'm trying, it's not working. Uh, so we have the patch notes. Maybe it's just now vertical. Maybe it's not supposed to be horizontal. Maybe Kabam wants it that way. We've got the event quest, which I don't think, other than sometimes some annoying nodes with bosses I really ever spend time talking about on this channel now. It's just not worth viewers time. Uh, we have Silver Sable as well as Negasonic Teenage Warhead, which if you miss my conversation about this earlier uh, today, Negasonic Teenage Warhead is an unbelievable bullseye counter that is going to give valiant players who spend $100 on an early access bundle, a huge advantage in Battlegrounds, not just against Bullseye, but any of those super annoying skill defenders, everybody from Kingpin to Atuma. Um, I personally struggle mightily against some random skill defenders that I feel like other people are better than me against, even somebody like Korg that I took Korg out of my, uh, my deck because I feel like... He's just an easy defender for people who fight me with their skill set. But when I fight people's Korgs, it's uh, mid. It's oftentimes mid, meaning I, I end up with about 50% health left. I'll take one or two unblockable special ones to the face, and I will take some thorns like uh, recoil damage when I hit into Korg with anything besides um, a light attack. So, Negasonic Teenage Warhead is the answer to all of those skill defenders, particularly because she has this atomic energy damage that she does with Incinerates. Then we've got the Knoll's Lair, which Kabam Jack said on today's live stream is the easiest and simplest side quest we've had in months, maybe all year, which is great because this current side quest feels like it is a test, a test that several people, including myself, have failed. And then the Spring of Sorrow. Spring is come and soon a special set of challenges will be made available to those who become Paragon or higher starting May 15th. Challenging content that consists of one 1v1 quest will be released every two weeks. Be warned, however, these encounters are not for the faint of heart. Blah, blah, blah. We know it's like the Winter of Woe. It is the Spring of Sorrow. And that is starting back up May 15th in a couple weeks. And then Mr. Sinister. I mean, I always like to concentrate on this update once I have the champ in my hand. But I love that uh, bleed potency is lowered by 100%. That you get rewarded for doing parries. And that you have several other really interesting um, utility updates. Including that special one now reflects all damage over time's back. As D-Gens with a flat potency of 90% of Sinister's attack. Shout out to robots like my girl Nebula, who this will not work against. And I wonder if this might make people feel as though they need to bring a robot into their Battlegrounds deck again if Mr. Sinister is a defender. I'm not saying he's the best defender. There are still champs like Warlock and Lady D that are pretty good counters, but maybe not as much after this. I fight Mr. Sinister all the time in map 6 in the mini bosses, so we'll see. But then we get to the bottom, really the, the focus of this. Okay, we discussed story level progression differences in the economy changing in the game. I talked about that on my channel uh, today as well, if you want to check that out. But then this incursions challenge sector. So I have technically become a legend like three times because I've done all the way through um, zone 25 in sector six with Hercules. He is still, especially when you get the right hacks, a cheat code where I think the best I've done is like three revives for the whole thing, which is crazy good for me. But Hercules is not always going to be available with the Saga Challenge because challenge sectors are temporary additions to incursions that will take place once per Saga. And the difficulty of this new sector is comparable to Sector 6, but summoners will only be able to use Saga Champions. That is a genius way to temporarily nerf Hercules by not allowing you to use him to complete the challenge. Now, if Hercules is one of these ex-Magica Saga champions, then I will be wrong. But my guess is, at least for some of these, he absolutely will not be. And if that's the case, you're going to have to use somebody else, and you're going to have to use more than three revives. Kabam had discussed, as 
recent as late 2023 about nerfing Hercules and his ability to just melt opponents in incursions was one of the reasons cited on the forums. But this is a way to nerf him temporarily by just making him irrelevant and unusable in this content. I think that's a much better uh, thing for them to do than the other options. So if you have to do this, I applaud this one over actually making any direct changes to the champion, which would result, result in catastrophic financial failure from Kabam, because I think there'd be a kind of boycott and lack of spending that they would not want to see, particularly before Omega Days and July 4 sales. So now you may not be able to bring Hercules in, but you're not going to be as ticked off as if Kabam said we're nerfing Hercules, because that would be crazy. Uh, anyhow, that is uh, my takeaway. You've got Alliance Quest buffs. Uh, choice nodes on maps 4th rate will now include 12 different bonus buffs, which is interesting. Unblockable effects. This release includes a significant cleanup to various abilities to the game that allow characters to go unblockable or block such attacks themselves. This is similar to the cleanup we have done with unstoppable effects because this unblockable is a much more common ability. We felt it was worth explaining how we went about this and what rules we followed so that behavior will be predictable and clear. Most importantly, there are some block unblockable abilities that didn't apply to certain unblockable abilities or that caught heavy attacks without clearly stating that they would. This is because some champions and nodes were claiming to use unblockable abilities, but were actually using code more in line with how ability attacks break block and block unblockable abilities were not uh, all consistent in whether they looked for these imposters or not. And the core of this cleanup is to standardize that all effects referred to as unblockable are in fact using that code and thus that all abilities that say they allow champions to block unblockable attacks are looking only for the appropriate code. So pretty interesting stuff at the end of this that I was um, not prepared for. But at the same time, it is uh, in the last point saying, while attacks against a crushed defender can be resisted by the standard ground mastery, so long as the attack is a heavy attack, we don't intend for any champions to get such an ability more broadly. The only champion whose block cannot be broken at all is Superior Kang because he's special like that. Uh, it sounds like it was written by Kabam Jax. Also updated several nodes and champion descriptions that were dodging ability accuracy modification. That could be something that we noticed. And then AI updates. We mentioned a while ago that we were looking into a change to the AI to make baiting specials more reliable, especially with champions whose dodge back and forth. Ugh. <coughs> Ooh, we've been testing this with the CCP over this past month. Special thanks to MP Blaze and Fintech. And are happy to announce that we're including this change in 44.1 going live next week. We also said that we were testing an update to the Defender's use of the Parry Mastery. This ran into some additional hurdles and will have to be delayed until a future build to make sure it won't actually increase how other or often Defenders can parry. Interesting. And then a bunch of bug fixes that um, may or may not come back to be examined if it turns out to be shady. Um... Which is kind of interesting. Um, well, I could talk for another 10 minutes on this. But I think the biggest takeaway... Well, there's really two. But Kabam is addressing AI next week. That's the big one. That's that's the big one. And then that Hercules... Uh, we'll see. I guess I can wait to see if Herc is going to be banned in this next sector before I make the video I'm guessing he will be but y'all it is all about AI updates if for anybody who watched this video this long thanks for watching there's a lot to get through have a good one